Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we are going to find out how to know when it's done. Now, depending on what we are working on here, whether it is a poem or a story or a novel or whatever. I've talked about this in other writing tip videos too, but there is a intuition we have as artists. Like this even goes with a painting. Like if you're painting something, there will come a moment when you're either typing, okay? Or you're writing, or you're painting, or you're doing whatever, okay? And you're going and you're going and you're going, and then suddenly you're gonna go like this. And you have to pay attention to this. Like, don't think too hard about it, but when you see this happen, understand what's going on. You'll be going and then you go like this. You, you, will, you will step back from your work and just kind of sigh. And that sigh is you pushing out the last of this thing you've created and once that happens that's when you know that it's done that's your your soul saying we're finished now okay now if you write stream of conscious that will probably help you a lot okay if you don't do that necessarily and you are very plotting with the things that you write, it's going to be harder for you to notice that. But typically, if that's too vague and you need like more like, how does this work? What is going to happen is whenever you're writing anything, whether it is a story, a novel, a poem, whatever, with short stories especially, this is usually pretty easy because most short stories that you're going to write, you're writing because you either thought of a cool twist before you even started the idea of the story. You either thought of a cool twist or a cool ending. And then you build the short story from there like backwards to figure out like, okay, how does the character get here? With poetry, I don't think people think that way when they're writing. So when you're writing poems, you need to have that turn, the, the volta or whatever people fucking call it, where you say all of these things to get to that one line. Okay. And a good example of this. In. This. Since we're going through. Burning in Water. Drowning in Flame. In the Bukowski Book Club right now. So there's this poem in here. Called. They. All of them. Know. Okay. And it's. It's a big one. And every line is, ask the sidewalk painters of Paris, ask the sunlight on a sleeping dog, ask the three pigs, ask the paper boy. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Four, one, two, three. Three and a quarter pages. Okay? It goes through all of that. Ask the men who read all the newspaper editorials. Ask the men who breed roses. Ask the men who feel almost no pain, no pain. Ask the dying. Ask the mowers of lawns and the attendees of football games. Ask any of these or all of these. Ask, ask, ask. And they will all tell you. Here's the turn. This is the Volta. This is the whole reason for this poem. This is the thing. Okay? What the fuck does Bukowski want us to know right now? What is the thing that's pushing his heart right now? A snarling wife on the balustrade is more than a man can bear. Okay? So the whole idea is having that, that twist, that what are you trying to get people to understand? Like, what is your metaphor 
here for? <laughs> What's your metaphor here for? Okay, like, what is the thing? Like, in my new thing, um, drinking less. Here, let me plug my shit. Like a, like a grown-ass marketer. So in drinking less, I have a poem in here called Dust. It's talking about how I'm not drinking, so now I'm noticing things that I never noticed before, and I'm counting, like, I'm noticing dust on things, and I'm counting the particles, and, and all this other stuff, and it's going down and down and down and down and down, and then at the end, it's like, I think all of these normal, boring things, and wonder if I should buy a broom, okay? That's obviously... Not very deep, but that's the turn. When you're writing, you need to find out, like, each poem you write, again, I don't think it should necessarily, you should be worried about answers as much as you're worried about questions. Like, what is the question? What is the thing you want to leave the reader with? So when they're done reading that poem, they're like, huh... Huh. But I also want to warn people, do not get in the habit of ending every poem with a question. With, like, full-on question mark and everything. Because then, like, people are expecting that you're going to do that. So switch that up. But being able to leave that for somebody. Like, something for them to kind of sink their teeth into because they're going to read all your pretty words and your beautiful lines and that's great and they're going to feel you but now you have to hit them okay so what is what you're going to hit them with and once you hit them that's when you fucking leave typically when you write that line you'll notice this if you pay attention to it when you hit that line you're going to go like this You're going to do the backup, okay? Because that line is really the thing that's inside you burning that's making you write that poem in the first place, okay? So that's how we know the writing's done. As far as the editing goes and the revision, I don't revise anything. Like, I don't, like, change my lines and change my words and move stuff around. The most I do is try to simplify. I gut. I cut stuff out if I feel like it's too wordy or too verbose or just too much. Um, but I know there are people out there who like to rewrite the same fucking poem a hundred fucking times. I personally believe that... Each time you revise, you take a little bit of your soul out of that poem. So if you're somebody who really doesn't want people to see you be vulnerable, then revise a lot. Okay? But if you are someone who wants to just, like, bleed and gush and, like, just kind of hope for the best, then revise very, very little. Okay. So anyway, everybody, if you dug this, crack them thumbs. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.